this is Jeremiah 50 and verse 23. How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? How is Babylon become a desolation among the nations? Kal halal yahawa, b'ashem yahawa shai, b'ashem rakakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And salutations to the brothers on down, teaching this truth, similar gospel, pushing across the four corners of the earth. And also greetings to the few sisters that listened to these video epistles. I've called this lesson Waiting for the Axe to Fall. There's this feeling in the in the air of something major is about to happen something big and we watch as we're supposed to watch and pray looking out we stand in God we're watching we're looking the scriptures say measure the time I think that's second is just nine and one supposed to be watching and looking and waiting. One of my musical heroes from way back, he's passed away now, Gil Scott Heron. He's got this song which I remember the title, the same as this waiting for the axe to fall. A couple of these choruses I remember Waiting for the axe to fall. Sometimes, laws we think that's all. When your head is in the noose, won't nobody turn you loose. Waiting for the axe to fall. Another one of those choruses. Waiting for the axe to fall. Sometimes, Lord, I think that's all. When your head is on the block. Ain't no way it's gonna stop. Waiting for the axe to fall. Seems like we're waiting. Everybody's waiting. We're nervous and we're waiting. We're looking and we're waiting. And so the song just goes on like, it's a interesting song. Fits this airy feeling of nervousness waiting and watching but our hope is in Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai and we look and we wait and we'd be dishonest if we say we didn't have apprehension about the judgment that is about to come so I picked a few scriptures here that touches on this airy feeling and what the scripture says about some of the devastation that is just around the corner also the perpetrator and what's going to happen to them with their role in this wickedness that they're foisting of that word up on the rest of us here in the earth. Let's go back to Jeremiah, get a little bit more context. Let's start at, uh, let's go 22. A sound of battle is in the land and of great destruction. How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? How is Babylon become a desolation among the nations. I have laid a snare for thee, and thou art also taken, O Babylon, and thou wast not aware, thou art found and also caught, because thou hast striven against the Lord Yahweh, 
Bahashem Yahawashai. I'm interested in this word here, thou art found and also caught. So if you're found, does that mean you're on the run? Why are you running? So it's a, let's see if the scripture has something to say about you must have done something wrong. So if we go all the way back to Genesis 4, and this is where Cain killed his brother and his punishment was being meted out. And this is what he had to say. This is Cain in response to the punishment that he was being told of. See, he got a glimpse of his future destruction. Behold, this is verse 14 of Genesis 4. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth and from thy face shall I be hid and I shall be a fugitive you see you're not a fugitive unless that means you're on the run on the run why because you're an offender you're a murderer and a vagabond that's a wanderer in the earth and it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me, and we look this word up, we see findeth in this context means anyone that reveal, if my identity is revealed, if they find me, they shall slay me. You see that? If it is found out who I am, then I will have to face the punishment. So listen to the response here in verse 15. And the Lord Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, said unto him, to Cain, therefore whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord Yahweh set a mark on Cain of leprosy, removing his pigmentation. So he is marked lest any finding him that's revealing him should kill him. So we see, why not? Well, his judgment, <coughs> excuse me, is to be reserved or his punishment reserved until the day of judgment. You see that? So this fugitive and vagabond who we see he's also depraved in other ways, identifying who he is. He's about to be caught in the act. See this first scripture here in Jeremiah said, I have laid a snare for thee. This is Babylon. Thou art also taken, you see. So a trap, a snare. He's going to be caught in the act with all his weapons and covered in blood and all the stolen goods, all the stuff he's done. He's about to be caught. It's a setup and he can't get out of it. Let's, um, where did he get these weapons? Let's look and let's see there's anything if we were to go to Genesis let's turn the pages here Genesis uh, 27 if we went to Genesis 27 and just go straight to the point and verse 40 and by thy sword shall thou live and shall serve thy brother see this is Cain in his reincarnation been given his blessings from Isaac his father as Esau Edom which is what Cain returned to the earth as verse 40 and by thy sword shalt thou live and shall serve thy brother and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck 
and 41 says, Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother. So he's a murderous brother whose thoughts is permanently on wickedness. That's what he's designed to do. Let's look at another. Let's go to Exodus 21, 16. 21, Exodus 21, verse 16. Where are you? Uh, yes. And he that stealeth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. So we're waiting for the axe to fall. Yeah. Let's go Exodus 22 and 4. There's evidence here. If the theft be certainly found in his hand alive, alive, whether it be an ox or an ass or sheep, he shall restore double. So there's evidence. I believe in numbers. Wasn't going to get that one, but why not? Leviticus numbers, that is 33. Or is it 35 and 33? Or is it 33 and 35? Where is it? Yes. 35, number 35, verse 33. So ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood it defileth the land, and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. And of course we familiar with uh, Revelation let's just might as well just read that one Revelation 13 9 and 10 it says if any man have an ear let him hear he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So we see, we see that there's a reason why this man is so keen on hiding everybody's identity, but especially his own. He doesn't want it to become known. If anybody findeth me, they will slay me. You see that? Let's... Uh, Let's get another scripture here. Let's see if we go to Amos and 5 and read a few verses here. Amos 5, 18 to 20, I think. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord, Yahweh, Mahashem, Yahweh, Shai, is darkness and not light. Verse 19, as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall, and the serpent bit him. Verse 20, Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark, and no brightness in it? You see? <clears throat> we are waiting for the axe to fall. And we're just looking at some, some evidence here. Let's try. Let's go back to Ezekiel 21. And verse 9, let's read a few verses here. Son of man, prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shah, say, A sword, a sword is sharpened, and also furbished. It is sharpened to make a sword slaughter, which is furbished that it may glitter, that we then make, should we then make mirth? Is it time for excitement and happiness? It contemneth the blood of my son as every tree. And he that given hath given it to be furbished, that it may be handled. This sword is sharpened, and it is furbished, to give it into the hand of the slayer. Verse 12, cry and howl, son of man, for it shall be upon my people. See, judgment is going to begin at the house of the Lord. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh It shall be upon the princes of Israel. Terrors by reason of the sword shall be upon my people. 
smite therefore upon thy thigh because it is a trial and what if the sword contemn even the rod it shall be no more said the lord Yahweh, power thou therefore son of man prophesy and smite thine hands together and let the sword be doubled the third time the sword of the slain it is the sword of great men that are slain which enter into their privy chamber as their private chambers i have set the point of the sword against all their gates that their heart may faint and their ruins be multiplied ah it is made bright it is wrapped up for the slaughter so we see it's a setup it's a snare and this man Esau Edom in his current guise since 1681 wanting the world to call him white there's no such nation in the scriptures in the scriptures he is Esau Edom and they're currently in rulership let's look at Nahum 3 let's start with verse 1 woe to the bloody city it is all full of lies and robbery the prey departeth not let's jump to 4 verse 4 because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot the mistress of witchcrafts that selleth nations through her whoredoms and families through her witchcrafts behold i am against thee saith the lord Yahweh of hosts and i will discover thy skirts upon thy face and i will show the nations thy nakedness and the kingdoms thy shame and i will cast abominable filth upon thee and make thee vile and will set thee as a gazing stock you see yeah and we're going to finish up by uh, reading a psalms here something i've been doing in these lessons well, let's go to psalm 17 a prayer of david hear the right O lord yahweh attend unto my cry give ear unto my prayer that goeth not out of faint lips let my sentence come forth from thy presence let thine eyes behold the things that are equal thou hast proved mine heart thou hast visited me in the night thou hast tried me and shall find nothing i am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress concerning the works of men by the word of thy lips i have kept me from the paths of the destroyer hold up my goings in thy paths that my footsteps slips not i have called upon thee for thou wilt hear me o power incline thine ear unto me and hear my speech show thy marvelous loving kindness O thou that savest by thy right hand them which put their trust in thee from those that rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings from the wicked that oppress me, from my daily enemies who compass me about. They are enclosing their own fat with their mouth they speak proudly. They have now compassed us in our steps. They have set their eyes bowing down to the earth like as a lion that is greedy of his prey, and as it were, a young lion lurking in secret places. Verse 13. Arise, O Lord, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword, from men which are thy hand, O Lord, Yahweh from men of the world which have their portion in this life and whose belly thou art fillest with thy hid treasure they are full of children and leave the rest of their substance to their babes as for me i will behold thy face in righteousness i shall be satisfied when i awake 
with thy likeness. Barakathai Hawa. Barakathai Hawa Shai. Barakathai Hawa. Barakathai Hawa Shai. Barakathai Hawa. Barakathai Hawa Shai. We're waiting for the axe to fall. And we know that this criminal, this fugitive, vagabond, prone to all types of deviancy, is about to make his move. And we can feel it. We're readying up. We're watching. We're on the rooftops. We don't want to be caught out there. The thief in the night. We don't want to be caught. We're watching, we're looking, we're waiting. So we don't want to draw this lesson out. It's just, a, as usual, a brief exhortation to the brothers and few sisters to stay on our watch, be prepared as best you can. Things are about to get really uh, tense and difficult but our hope is in this word this truth you've been listening to waiting for the axe to fall shalom until the next one